Hello, my name is Cosmin and I'm a current university student at Games Design and Art, which is part of Southampton University. I'm in my third year and these vlogs have the role of showing some insights into how I created my game for the final major project. Now the name of my game goes by Future Unknown, but I will explore the details of that naming uh, further in the blog itself. So I'm creating these videos because I believe that the process of creation of a game is as important as the game itself and I always end up like searching or uh, browsing through how different games were made like Fallout, Mass Effect series, uh, Deus Ex series because I'm really interested into how elements go together to form a great and successful game. In our game course the final major project has the purpose of creating a whole game throughout the course of the year which can then be presented at the degree show of the Winchester School of Arts and as well as in our own games and design uh, show in London Hoxton Arches this year which takes place I believe from the 2nd of July to 5th of July and I am encouraging people to come and visit and test our uh, games or maybe invite uh, like persons that you know, family, friends, and come and see our degree shows because besides my game there's also a lot of great, sh of great games which will be present there. Before I start talking about the process that I use to create my game, I would like to mention that you can find a lot of the information that I'm speaking about as well as some other stuff that I did on my website which you can see up here which is the line mcdesign.co.uk uh, so yeah, just feel free to explore my website and uh, you can contact me or reach me through the hyperlinks here up above. So I will start with the research now. The first stage of the research started in the first week of university. So phase one was just answering some questions and finding the themes that interest us most. And those questions that were suggested to us by our tutor was like what super interests me, what stimulates me intellectually, what gets me excited, what makes me cry, what makes me laugh, what makes me angry. I will let you uh, read about those because I'm trying to limit this to 15 minutes because I know that a lot of people tend to kind of lose interest if something takes too long. So yeah, I'm trying to keep it as short as possible. So yeah, after answering those questions, I got some themes that I went and researched more. So I got like human enhancement, technological advancement, pixel art. So those three connected to form like the core of what interests me. And I also have a bit of future in, in my game, as well as uh, to some degree stuff about misinformation and how and that integrates itself into the story of the meta game. So here you can see like the mental maps of those questions and that gave me like the themes which are in yellow that I enumerated about. So after that we went on to researching each of those themes and getting some starting points. Uh, I will not go through all of those but I will show like the main ones that I did like for example for human enhancement this is like the mental map that I did for it and what I did was get like some visual research about human enhancement, prosthetics and whatnot, how they look, how they connect, uh, a bit of mm, nanites here, uh, like some kind of futuristic design that goes, how different eye prosthetics might look, uh, exoskeletons, so on and so forth. And that looked like so journals, academic entries, which deal with this, which is like ethical issues in human enhanced by Nick Bostrom, uh, prosthetic exoskeletons and rehabilitation, uh, so and exoskeletons and robot prosthetics, which was by Robert Bogue. And then I looked at series or projects that dealt with the respective themes, and in this case, it was some of the series that I loved the most and played the most. Uh, the main one being Mass Effect series, which I'm a huge fan of, and then New Sex series, which I really loved in terms of enhancing and it gave me like the whole idea of uh, prosthetics and how they are used, how cool they look, how they can help improve the life of a person. But I also did like some more themes which found themselves into my own narrative for the game, and which I will mention it further on other video blogs. 
And uh, another one was Shadow Run Universe, which is an interesting tactical game and has some interesting mechanics. So one of the things of those mechanics that I liked was making use of fantastical elements such as magic, uh, but the thing is it also dove into cybernetics as you're an enhancing character and it was like the whole thing of balancing this with magic because in the game the more you enhance yourself the more you lose your ability to use magic so it's like the whole balance of uh, how you deal with that how do you do you want do you want to be a magical character or do you want to be more technological and what do you want to sacrifice so that also has an effect into what type of class you choose and also creates like your own emergent narrative in the end uh, for those of, of you that do not know, emergent narrative is basically just a narrative that appears as as a result of you playing the game and creating your own chain of events and judgment of uh, the whole story and it actually adds a whole nother layer over the normal narrative that the game designers wanted to have. And after that I did like some thumbnails responding to uh, like the visual research or no, no, wait, actually, uh, let me correct that. Thumbnails are basically like just some ideas that uh, came on my mind just from thinking about it. So, you see, I had like different ideas again with the episode things. These are like hard elements, so heads up display elements that could appear in your protagonist and whatnot, like with an axe to a chip, a prosthetic here, a man with a prosthetic leg running. Uh, this is more or less mind control to through like a connection to your mind which again uh, delve into my game itself uh, this is like the whole cybernetic cyborg thing uh, and then I just like search for an artist or slash designer that dealt with the issue as I mentioned above with uh, the academic research in this case it was like the founder of Open Bionic which is a company that 3D prints prosthetics for people that actually need them and this I believe this is a great thing because it really cuts on the cost of productions and uh, gives a chance to people to improve their, their lives but at a lower cost and more say than MIT that are studying how to do like proper prosthetics and whatnot but that comes at a cost because they use like materials like metal uh, connections cybernetics and whatnot whereas this is cybernetics, but at the same time custom the production cost by using a 3D printer and 3D printing materials and makes it a lot cheaper for the normal humans to use them but not as a research subject, ju just to improve their everyday life, so yeah. Afterwards, uh, uh, then it's all just technological advancement goes through the same process that I mentioned above and you have like stuff that, again, I found interesting visually, uh, academics academic resources, projects and games that uh, were related to this and then thumbnails which respond to this uh, again artists design them and that continues like through the whole through the whole team exploration project and after that uh, we just like choose a team that we liked and uh, the team that I liked and came was transhumanism transhumanism is basically a movement in which uh, the role is to improve oneself through whatever means uh, possible. Say, for example, some people will not believe it, but even that thing itself is a uh, is in to some degree transhumanistic in its idea, because we're looking to improve our body, and we're doing that by either restraining our diet or controlling our diet, choosing on certain foods over others to improve our health lifestyle and prolong our life. So yeah, that's like that's the that's the simplification of the whole transhumanistic idea. So uh, yeah, I'll show you a bit of what I did then in terms of transhumanistic when exploring it. So for example, in transhumanism context, is just like a definition of what it is. For example, the org organization Humanity Plus, which is transhumanistic in its nature, is defines transhumanism as such, which is basically the intellectual and cultural movement that affirms the possibility and desirability of fundamentally improving the human condition through applied reason, especially by developing and making widely available technologies to eliminate aging and to greatly enhance human intellectual, physical and psychological capabilities. So it says what I was referring to, so it's just like improving our lifestyle through whatever means necessary and prolonging our life and hopefully to some degree just eliminate uh, death in itself which 
I don't know if that will be possible, but extend your lifetime and like living until somebody kills you and whatnot is possible. So yeah, uh, there you have it. And once I established the context of what transhumanism meant, I just went around and delved further into it, finding stuff that might help my research, uh, might fit my research, if you will. So the first thing was like just looking at persons of interest, which helped advance it. And you have guys like Hugh Fair, which is a former climber that lost his legs to frostbite during a climb on Mount Washington and afterwards finished MIT and become an engineer in, and design prosthetics uh, which help him escape from awkward position which other climbers would have problem with because he designed prosthetics in such a way that he had just one leg so that so that's what I mean you got like people like him at the forefront of the transhumanist movement which try and improve the lives of of normal people then you got like Nick Bostrom which is basically considered the father of transhumanism and he has a lot of works done on the whole idea of transhumanism as well as some other things that uh, do with the advancement of humanity such as AI and a few of the stuff that I researched was uh, written by him and he's also the co-founder of the World Transhumanist As Association which changed to Humanity Plus and you saw in the context area defined what transhumanism is and then you got some philosophers and bioethicists such as Julian Savulescu which has like some ideas that might be considered some outrageous such as selecting and modifying the DNA of a person to make the best version of it so to some people that might seem quite exaggerated but I can understand from some point because you want to have like children which are uh, which have no problem of dealing with diseases, which run faster, uh, play better, uh, work better. So what what want the best for the future? But then again, those opinions are different. So yeah, it depends on each person's point of view. So after looking like uh, at all these persons, I then went to search like to academic uh, journals and whatnot. And afterwards I went looked at the whole history of it which you can find again on my website over here and it, and it really shows that the ideas of transhumanism were quite early in in history even even the whole idea of extending life through which can be found in like the epic of Gilgamesh shows that humanity always wanted to be more than what they are at that point in time and after looking through like history, I went through like what was the language of transhumanism, uh, which might find itself into my games, which hasn't yet, but the explanations of them uh, are quite interesting. Then, and I don't know, who knows? Maybe maybe it ends up in my games. Uh, then I did like some visual research, uh, had like some color palettes to my which I might use from them. Uh, Again, some music which like reminds me of transmission. It, it, it's more or less just like electronic music, but uh, brings quite a, uh, an interesting idea about them. Uh, and again, yeah, some videos which is which is basically a lot of TED talks which I would recommend watching it that deal with uh, the whole idea of transhumanism, prosthetics, how prosthetics improve, uh, how how we might live further on, what they found so far. So. So yeah, they're all interesting subjects, so I would recommend just uh, getting a look through them even on my website or just going to ZTEX and just look, look at them because then you got some other links which are interesting as well. So yeah, after this phase was finished, we switched on to like phase 3, which is basically just creating some stuff uh, to get an idea of how our game might end up looking like. So in this thing, I, I'm, I'm not like the greatest artist or whatnot, but I'm always eager to learn. So. I went to like Inkscape Essentials to help me uh, work with the Inkscape program to create like different stuff that I could use and then I just like went and did some different objects that might find themselves into like a transhumanist medium you know so afterwards I had like for example like an AI drone uh, an AI drone which is basically an artificial intelligence drone which houses as from the name an artificial intelligence and like each of these objects that I created have like their own story which can be found on my itch.io page and those are links in uh, are linked right over here like michaelgamesdesign.itch.io 
yeah there you go you can run them into the browsers most of the stories can be run into the browser but besides that i have like all the different projects that i did uh, in my previous years uh first level of the game that was fun and yeah there you go mod shop a surgery station artificial womb AI drone. This, this this is from the research phase basically in which i explored with teams and narratives and and how they respond but the thing with the ai drone is that uh, design was quite flat in itself and it was just to me that i should try and do like some isometric stuff so i just went ahead and the rest of things i just went to like a system of creating designs and just getting some some feedback for which designs work best but these designs that i did themselves are a visual response to stuff that i researched so basically some visual Im images and just uh, created a uh, design for each of them so yeah i i then just did a whole thing of what looks best and the one that had like the most flows i just recreated digitally to really cut on production time and help me get through the week and then i just had uh people played the narratives and got some feedback like for example who did the most choices which was which were the choices 60% yes 40% no so basically the majority of people who played decided to explore out of the choices available to them what were the pros the cons of the games and what could be improved and what's like the rating of it out the rating is based on a scale of one to five so uh a three is pretty okay-ish for this for the story and uh yeah, besides that artificial boom and AI drone, you got like prosthetic surgery station, uh, which went through the same process, and the same goes for, same goes for the human enhancement shop. Uh, but for this one, I went like to different uh, designs of how general stores look like, and then again same responses, and, and this is like a fan concept shop, which really brings it back to like a, an old western style. But I tried to do it like this so it makes like some sort of titanium shit and whatnot so it looks it really gives the vibe of future it really gives the vibe or description of futuristic where i still looking like class there's a whole background thing in it if you played like the mod shop uh story story narrative uh which was done in time by the way which is a quick way of testing uh, play testing the stories themselves so after like this phase i just went and looked like how the art style of uh, the game was or i wanted it to be which you can see it's more or less an isometric point of view style and i wish i had the skills to create these things but i really went ahead and uh delve into the pixel art style which is a bit easier to do and really helped me to explore it and then in the world of the game you can see th this is where basically i you have narrative points of the story that I created then came up as a result of all the research that I done beforehand and on this page of words of the game you can see you can see like the basics of my world and what they are as well as uh, the main characters that go into it, that go into it you know like for example unknown which is the character that the player will will use uh, it says like some basic stuff which you can find it's like occupation which is odd man uh, he has no alliance he has like one ally uh, he has like you can see the history which this is kind of like a bonus but in the game it's just gonna be like suggested from where we came from where he came so this is more like a development type of stuff when creating the art uh, his age uh, AI is basically artificial intelligence uh, artificial intelligence inside I think it was uh, which is like self-made and improved it's disconnected from a global network which again has to do with the history I do suggest to try and uh, look at the word details uh, it gives some idea there and hacking capability and gives him hacking capabilities Oh yeah, no, it's artificial intelligence. Uh, can I remember improvement? I think it was. Uh, anyways, yeah, that that's uh, that's unrelated to this. So yeah, uh, this is basically what his artificial intelligence that it's inside him uh, helps him do. And you have enhancements which are variable because they they will be decided by the player. And data number is basically the recognizable number that you have within the universe. And this is the current one because he's capable of changing it according to what he needs. So yeah, in this world of the game, you can see like some other characters that would play some role, but 
for example, I can dig star, get details about them, but they're not like in the game, in the game itself that I'm creating right now. So, yeah. Uh, feel free to explore it. Uh, right. So this video went a bit longer than I wish for, so I'm trying to be quite short on this, and I will try for the future videos to keep it, keep it in the planned 15 minutes, because uh, there's quite a lot to go through with this research thing. Uh, yeah. Phase four is basically like the final phase of the first semester that we had, and it completely focuses on designing the basis, the basis, or basics of the game. And this is a design phase in itself. So for phase four was creating a demo storyline, uh, which is the story for the very first life. Uh, funny enough. Uh, it ended up like this, which I think it was an undesirable, but cool way of telling the story itself. And I did get some design about that, so yeah, feel free to see how the initial storyline was. And the storyline is basically a combination of those three objects and their stories in, in the initial, in the initial phase three. And I built upon those with some of the feedback that I had. Uh, some of it which was basically not a lot of choices but there was nothing I could do about that since that was just like testing the whole idea of the story itself. Not with curves but but yeah and uh, momentarily you have quite a few choices and those choices uh, reveal segments of information about the game which is like the whole purpose since this this ended up being more of an exploration type of game that what I initially desired was the like point and click uh, adventure with uh, shooting mechanics and whatnot but I think uh, it ended up kind of nicely being uh, an exploration game in the end and it really allows me to say the story uh, through the methods that I have and how I how I wanted them to be said so yeah so yeah I had some demo storyline and then I did like some gameplay concepts which basically show what I had at the moment at that specific moment, which is uh, basically the click and move, which you can see here uh, working, and you can see it on my website as well. So yeah, it just shows, and it shows how the colliders work within the game engine, which I will uh, go deeper on in my next video, which uh, focuses on the workflow that I had for creating the first level. So yeah, uh, the click and move mechanic. Uh, how players will see the message, which this again uh, changed for a bit. Like, uh, let me show you how it works. So, the game uh, works like this, but uh, the way that, that, that I had at that point didn't work as I wanted it to be. So, I like this uh, whole idea of the words just sh showing themselves. Uh, I kind of had to scratch it in for, for a plugin, which helped me create the storyline better but uh, yeah I'll go into more detail in the next video and again the shooting mechanic which uh, it's it, it's quite clunky at this stage and I, I for the moment at least I decided not to not to include it in the game and just get like the whole game finished with the story but completely in line and then see if I have time to to add like the shooting mechanic which would make an interesting addition but I really have to be really careful about how, where I would put it so yeah so these are like the main game print concepts which were supposed to form form it, but it ended up just being at at this now, uh, just the uh, the dialogue and uh, click and move, which for the moment is just like moving with W S D. So even this is with uh, just but yeah, the main mechanic is this, the narrative itself. So there you go. And then like some inspiration and colors, just basically like uh, getting colors and colors from Mass Effect, uh, Deus Ex, and Shadow and so the main three games of inspiration which again you found them in like the phase one human enhancement uh, where it all started with from initially uh, then some details about world building I planned initially to use a tile set but in terms of construction that uh, used a lot of time used a lot of time uh, about creating creating the characters the world well, no, not creating the characters. Basically, it took a lot of time in creating the world because I always had to think about how this matches, how this, and it also restricted me in, cre in creating the elements that would, would that made the building itself. So I just decided that, at least for this whole game that I'm building up for the show, I will 
I will just use uh, stuff that was created by me and also make use of, of some assets from opengamer.org.com. But yeah, I, I really recommend searching for that on Google and it should be the first answer because that gives you a lot of free stuff that you can use in your own games and also help me to some degree uh, creating the stage that I'm at now. And after the world building, I just set up like the main characters in the game, which made use. Uh, there we go. Uh, OpenGameArt.org. Yeah. So that's that's where you can get like free stuff that you can use for that you can use for your game. And this is like the basic uh, spreadsheet that I used and created this character over here, this lovely chap, uh, in pixel art style. Uh, again, I will go into more detail into the next video when explaining how that works. And uh, yeah, this is like his uh, portrait or image. I, I know, a bit blocky, but still, uh, I think it turned out uh, quite nicely. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this this marks the end of the first video blog. And again, I'm sorry it took quite a bit because this 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 was covering like a whole semester on on a on a quick quick uh, telling of what happened during that. Because again, I believe that research is the basis and most important aspect of creating a game because that uh, truly feeds into how everything else would turn out and it's also one of my favorite things because I enjoy reading a lot of stuff and just like seeing uh, how 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 they click together how uh, what affected and what was the repercussion in the future so yeah I, w I, I would advise make sure you do proper research before any game ever and uh, be sure you do it properly because really helps in, build, in, build, in building in building your game and, and it shows it, it truly shows compared to other games 